book of Acts in chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 1. Hey, we've got uh, someone new here with us this morning. I want to say this first and foremost, Miss Keitha, glad to have you here with us. And I reckon you got your new baby with you today. Amen. One week old, God's blessings upon you. Amen. In the book of Acts in chapter 3 and verses 1 through 6 is where we're going to start in just a few minutes. I do want to say this morning, <clears throat> I am honored to have you here with us this morning. I'm honored to be in the house of the Lord together. And uh, thank you for coming out to worship with us here at West Highland. And my prayer this morning that the Spirit of God, His very words, speak directly unto the heart of who we are. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Let us pray this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come here today and stand here in this sacred spot, Lord, that you have unknown in us to be in. We ask God for the Holy Spirit to move mightily here today. Use us, Lord, to declare your word. Lord, as the messenger this morning, may I be very sensitive and alert and very uh, attentive, Lord, to the moving and the direction of the Holy Spirit. Have your way in this service this morning. Hallelujah. We glorify your name today. We glorify the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, today. Thank you, Lord. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to tell you this morning that we, I was telling my wife yesterday that uh, I didn't, we didn't have service Wednesday night. And so most of the time, my time is split up in uh, about two different directions. And uh, on Wednesday night, we have been studying on the Holy Spirit. And the relation to the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. Well, starting back Monday or Sunday night when I got home, I just took back up on Acts chapter 3. And I spent five days in Acts chapter 3. I told her, I said, I got good news and some bad news. <laughs> I said, the good news, I've covered Acts chapter 3 thoroughly for five days. She says, how many of your notes? I said, I stopped on five. I said, this is probably going to be a part two to this message today. I want to speak to you this morning on something I've entitled, Silver and Gold, Have I None? In the book of Acts in chapter 3, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, probably around three o'clock in the afternoon. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, and to ask of alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter, this is the lame man, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, Look upon us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter said, We don't have silver, neither do we have gold. But such as we have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Regardless of what you, have might, you might have been told or regardless of what you have might heard from somewhere on the street or somewhere else that you might have been, I want to tell you this morning there's still power in the name of of Jesus. Don't let this become just an old saying that you've heard 
from some old saints that quoted it. Don't let it just become an old phrase that somehow has no meaning to you. I want to tell you right now there's still power in that name. That devils still tremble at the name of Jesus. That sinners are still saved at the name of Jesus. The lame still walk by in the name of Jesus Christ. He is not dead, but he is alive. I shared with you last week as we jumped into the book of Acts in chapter 1 and chapter 2. We begin to look into Pentecost. We begin to look into the, when you jump into chapter 2, we see where Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Where Luke is beginning to write about the power of God moving here in, at, at, the, at the festival of Pentecost, the, the celebration of Pentecost. And when you look at it, you just want to sum it up like this, or at least I do. Pentecost is shouting that Jesus Christ is alive. And this is what it's declaring through the power now of the Holy Spirit uh, moving in the life of believers, moving in the life of Peter, moving in the life of John and the other apostles that are there. It is shouting that the Jesus Christ whom you crucified on an old rugged cross and placed uh, in an old tomb that he is risen from the dead. And, And what you're seeing now is that which Joel prophesied of. This is the outpouring of his spirit. So it's declaring this, and when we jump into the book of Acts, it is also now we jump into this this message that we're going to speak today. It's just going to be, a, a what I read was six verses, but it's just going to try to bring in this whole chapter to a certain point, and we'll catch up with it next week. The setting of this when you look at it, you, you probably have read this. It was probably nothing that you have not ever heard. And the first thing that came to your mind when we went to chapter 3, you thought about Peter and you thought about a lame man. You thought about that verse that sometimes so often we, we begin to quote and we, it comes to our mind about the silver and the gold. So when you look at the sitting of this, you're going to find out that there's a couple people that are the very subject of what is about to happen here at the entrance of a temple. And we find Peter and John. We also find some Jews from Jerusalem that are gathered here later on. But we also find a lame man. But I want to tell you this morning, and I want to make this loud and clear, because so many times when we preach about this, we begin to identify Acts chapter 3, where Peter healed a lame man. And as intriguing, as interesting as these subjects are, the, the life of Peter and the life of John, and even this lame man which we're looking at, they should be overshadowed by the theme of chapter 3, and that is a risk. Savior who is still alive. Oh, that's the whole theme. Not only are we going to see the power of a Savior at work, we're also going to see the power of grace at work. We're going to see the power of the gospel at work. I want to tell you this morning that Jesus Christ is still alive and Pentecost is declaring it. The Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit through the life of the believers is declaring Jesus Jesus Christ is alive. Oh, the, not only that, but you begin to look through the book of Acts and you're going to find out just time after time. And the writer of the book of Acts, it, Luke is declaring this, uh, Jesus is alive. Let me shout this to the church this morning. I ought to give you something to be happy about. It ought to make something that just inside of you start to stir up, knowing that your Savior is alive. That no matter what you're facing, no matter what you may go through, no matter what may come your way, Jesus is alive. I want to look something at first, something first. I want to look at this lame man. There's something very interesting about this guy. And I I can relate to this man. And before this is over, I hope that we can tie in where there's a parallel between this lame man and who we are. When you begin to look at this man, we find out in chapter 4. 
In chapter 4 and verse 22, it gives a little description of this lame man. And it says that he was lame for over 40 years of his life. I don't know about for you, but that's a long time. And let me say it this way. When I was 10 years old, it really seemed like a long time. But since I reached and surpassed 40, it does not seem as long as it did. (laughs) Is anybody with me this morning? But 40 years is a long time to deal with anything. 40 years is a long time to be held captive by anything. And this is what this, this lame man had been lame for since birth. He, he had never known how to walk. Is anybody with me? He didn't know any other way of life. And not, and he was going, if he was going to know any other way of life, it would be simply, and he would know any other way of life except the power of God intercede in his life. Let me make this plain here today. If this man is to experience anything any different for 40, over 40 years, he had been lame, never been able to walk, held captive by this lameness, the same way that we deal with some things in our life holding us captive. And if he's going to be set free of this, the only way it's going to happen is going to be through the interceding power of God. There's a parallel to this. When you begin to look at this with man and when you begin to look at it with me and you, there's a great parallel to this because there's something that me and you have been born into. Oh, help me here. And I want to say it this way. Me and you were born into death. I said, me and you were born into death. And I'm not just saying we was born to die physically. That is too. But we were born as sinners separated from God. Is anybody with me? And you can be 10 years old. You can be 20 years old. You can be 30 years old or 40 years old. Unless God intercede you're not going to be able to pass from death unto life. Hello, somebody. So there's a great parallel to this man. The only way for us to pass from death into life is through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice that he has made for me and you. Hello, somebody The only way for me to be restored spiritually is going to be through this man. The only way I'm going to regain strength or just gain strength, not regain it, to gain strength is going to be through this man. I'm talking about the power of a resurrected Savior. The man who died upon an old rugged cross, who's preaching about all around the world this morning, hopefully. I'm telling you, that he, if something is going to be restored, strength is going to be restored, it will only be by him. Amen? Y'all stay with me here. It's the only way. Not by the power of John, not by the power of Peter, but only by the power of a Savior would this man walk again. Let me say this this morning. I want to make this plain and clear. Because so many times we are looking for some other avenue for deliverance. We're chasing things for some other deliverance. Maybe there is another way. It amazes me at the church people who spend a lot of time looking in other directions when Jesus said and plainly said it that he was the way. He was not a way. He was the way. Amen. He is the answer. And for this man, having been here for so long, I think it's also to be noted that the lame man was brought to the gate daily. 
I want to share this. He was not brought there randomly, and I don't know how I don't know how far this goes back in his life, but he was brought here daily. And if we look at this and just think of it, we would have to think that he's been at this gate for a very long time. Don't miss this point right here. It is evident from the time that this man spent at the temple gate that the strength of man. Neither the works of religion could help this man overcome his strongholds. Surely, if man could have helped him, surely if the strength of religion could have helped him, for being brought here for this long a period of time, certainly something would have happened. Certainly there would have been a progressive change in his life. But yet it does tell us nothing about this. It does tell us he was over 40 years old and he was brought to this place daily and he was there to beg for alms. So the position that he was in was not being able to help him not one bit. The people passing by him could not help him. Uh, the temple workers could not help him. But he come to find out that there was a man who could help him. And I think this is where the church needs to be. I'm going to get into this. So Y'all stay with me. This also holds true to our condition spiritually. To your spiritual condition, this holds true. Neither can religion or man or the works of man bring healing to your withered soul. Only Jesus. Only he can. When you look into this, there's something else here. There's an expectation that's taking place. This man's at this gate. He's here for a reason. And probably some of you have already read into this. You know the reason that he's at this gate. He is sitting there, and when Peter looks at him, Peter makes a comment. Peter tells him what he does not have. He started off with telling him, I do not have any silver or gold. What was the man's expectation? The man's expectation to start with was silver and gold. This is what he was there for. He was a man that's brought there, a lame man that could not help himself. And out of the, the customs that were taking place there, and out of the compassion of the hearts of, uh, of love or just obligation, they would just go by him and drop him some silver or gold. And I want to just add this in his little tin can. Anybody with me? I'm not saying he had that there. I added that there. But you can see the mindset. This man has come here day after day, and all that he is hoping for is just enough. Maybe I can find enough to sustain me, to move me from one day to the next. I'm just hanging on. You can see the picture of this. And this is what this man is expecting. He is expecting for a little bit of silver and a little bit of gold. But when Peter confronts him, Peter looks at him and says, Silver and gold have I none. But Peter had something that was way greater in value than silver. He had something that was way greater in value than gold. And he said, i got a name that I want to tell you about who is able to pull you up up out of the condition that you're in and his name is Jesus oh is anybody with me this morning I want to tell you sometime we have relied on silver and gold to get us out of our situation we have put confidence we have put faith in it but there's only certain things that silver and gold and certain points it can carry you to I want to tell you there is a name that's above all name and it goes beyond silver it goes beyond gold it goes beyond mountaintop it goes beyond valleys it goes beyond sickness it goes beyond death and that name is a name of a resurrected Savior by the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Is anybody with me this morning? I don't know what this guy was expecting besides silver and gold. Oh, but he was about to be brought into a rude awakening. Time out. Let me catch my breath just one second tell you a story. I just thought about this. Some, I don't know if I've shared this since I've been here. 
we was preaching in church one Sunday, and there was a man who came to church that day. He, he broke down. I can't, I can't forget if he's the one who broke down the car or if he was the one toting the surfboard going down I-65. But he come in. I won't never forget that morning we was sitting on, standing on the stage, and we had a couple ushers at the church, and I had made a point to them. You know, y'all take y'all seat people, make sure everybody's seated. I was standing there, and one of my ushers walked and stood right there. We're there in the middle of praise and worship, and he's trying to get my attention. Come here. And I'm thinking, well, we're in the middle of worship service, and he won't leave. I'm like, what are you? I left and walked over where he was at. His name was Rodney. I said, what is it, Rodney? He said, Stacy. There is a guy back here at the back door who wants to see you. I said, now? He said, he wants to see the pastor. He said, Stacy, we've tried to do whatever we can, but he won't leave until he gets to see you. I told him, I said, y'all sing one more song. I walked back here. I said, introduce me to him right in the middle of praise and worship service. I looked at him. I talked to him. I didn't have just a few seconds. It's fixed to be time for me to go to preaching. I looked at him and I said, sir, I'm going to be with you. I said, I'm going to help you out, but I want you to do this one thing for me. Just take a seat, and as soon as church service is over, I will be with you. I promise you that. Oh, we was preaching about a resurrected Savior that day. Oh, my. <laughs> This man was looking to expect something. I don't know what. He probably wasn't expecting to get what he got. <laughs> I remember that Sunday. The Holy Ghost got to moving in that place. And you can imagine. I'm preaching and got my hanky out, boy. And I'm <laughs> spitting and slobbering. And man, you know, I mean, the Holy Ghost is moving in that place. And we give an invitation that morning. I never forget it. And I want to think that was on an Easter Sunday. I brought that man to my house, to my mom and daddy's, and fed him lunch that day. I can still remember him. We was at CLM, and they had two long rows of pews, and he was standing right over here on the left. And there was people gathered all around him. We gave the invitation. This man come weeping and crying to an altar, crying out. He said all he could say, my mama said it was real. My mama said it was real. He's standing there shaking his hands and just trembling. The Holy Ghost done got all over him. And all he could say was, my mama said to I said, sir, what are you trying to tell me? He said, my mama was a Christian woman. She was a praying woman. And for her whole life, she tried to convince me that Jesus was still alive, that he was real. And he said, I, my mama told me that he's alive. That day, I don't know what he was expecting, but he got something further greater than riches, than silver or gold. It was something instilled inside that man by the Holy Spirit that's life changing. That's the power of a risen Savior. Whew. Is anybody with me? My, my. Let me tell you this morning. This ain't some book that's full of stories uh, that somebody made up. These, this book right here, not only is this one, but you can find testimonies of people in this congregation that will tell you that not only is this book declaring that Jesus is alive, but their life is also declaring that Jesus is alive. My, my. This man sitting at the gate. Oh, he's looking, people coming by. They throwing some silver and coins in and some gold coins in. Maybe just trying to soothe the conscience of their heart. Maybe there was a, just an a, a obligation that they felt like it was to feel. And they seen Peter and John coming up and they fixed their eyes upon him. I can see him as a lame beggar standing there. Oh, I need somebody to help me. I've been at this gate day in and day out. I've been struggling day after day just to make it. Just to be able to buy bread and just to be able to get back and forth. I, I'm struggling with my, I'm held by this, this uh, infirmity that I got and then he met up with a man by the name of Peter. Is anybody with me? What this lame man was about to receive was an act of grace. Are you still with me? 
I'm fixing to connect with you on this. What do you mean, Pastor? Because so many th- people are in the same condition that this lame man is in. And some religious people has done told you, God won't do this for you. I was going to say religious nut, but I didn't. <laughs> Just to let y'all know, <laughs> this is on live. Y'all excuse me. God won't do this for you. Look at yourself. God does not accept your kind. You can't even get your own self up. You must do something first. I told you this was an act of grace. Why do you say that, Pastor? This man couldn't walk, had never been able to walk, and had never been able to give anything. If you would look at him, it really connects you back with Jonathan, King David's best friend's son by the name of Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth was wounded in his legs and he couldn't walk. And Mephibosheth referred to himself as a dead dog. In other words, I am useless for anything. But what would cause the king? To leave his palace. What would cause the king to leave the comfort of his home? And come all the way down to Loaded Bar and look for me. The same thing that caused Jesus to leave. Oh, my, my, my. I wish somebody would help me this morning. All the comforts of heaven, uh, all the throne of glory, and come to earth and die upon an old rugged cross. I, I didn't do anything for this. There was no good in me. I was nothing but an old lame dead dog. But Jesus had left the, his glory and came to heaven. Who to die for an old sinner boy like me? And Peter says, I want to tell you something, lame man. This ain't got nothing to do with you or your condition or what you've done or your past. This has to go back some 50 days ago. I don't know whether you heard word about it, but I just suspect that you have. Over 50 days ago, there was a man who died upon a cross who was placed in the grave, and now he's risen from the dead. Woo! My, my, my. Woo! <laughs> Peter says, I don't have any silver and I don't have any gold, but before this man by the name of Jesus left, he give us authority and power to go and preach the gospel and to use his, my, my, my. To use his name to raise the lame, to heal the sick, and to cast out devils. And I've come to tell you, I don't have any silver, and I don't have any gold, but such as I have in the name of Jesus. Woo, my, my, my. Peter looks at him and says, get up. You ought to just touch your neighbor and say, Jesus changes everything. He changes everything. Y'all got to excuse me. I might get loud today. (laughs) I really don't do this on purpose. It's just something gets down inside of me. (laughs) You can always tell when my, I don't know what you would call it, my excited level goes up. I get louder. (laughs) I want to go to running. I want to go to shouting. I want to tell you that he's alive. He's alive. He's alive and he's able to change your life. My, my, my. My, my, my. Glory to God. What was about to be presented to this man by Peter to him could only be received by faith in a living Savior. I want to share this thought with you just one second. I was studying into this. 
And it's been questioned by some whose faith was at work here. Definitely we see Peter and John's faith was present. They would not have done what they done. Oh, if they didn't believe in the power of a risen Savior. But you can also see the lame man's faith at work. Pastor, where do you see this at? When Peter reached his hand out, the, blind, the lame man reached and got a hold to it. Oh, a man that has been lame for over 40 years of his life, when somebody speaks to him and says, get up, you don't reach and grab another man's hand with the expectation of getting up unless you have believed that what he said is true. <laughs> I, I don't know where this lame man had been positioned at, but just some days earlier, Peter and John and the apostles was in an upper room. They right, they right here in this same little city. Oh, there's a rumor going around. There's a noise that's being brought around. There's people talking. They're in the street corners. They're in the barber shops. They're in the hair parlors. They're in the cafes. Tell us, have you heard what happened at Pentecost? Somebody said, I've heard about it. It was you that he said, I was there to witness it. He said, I heard a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. And that wind blowed into the house that day and it began to fill these people with the Holy Spirit. Oh, there were people speaking in tongues. There were people dancing. There were people singing. Oh, there was something that took place that day. And Peter stood up and began to preach the power of the gospel. And men's lives were being saved who I thought would never could be saved. All of a sudden, I can tell you and witness and testify to you, lame man. I don't know what all happened here, but I'm telling you, Jesus is alive. And when Peter showed up that day, oh, this wasn't the first time he had probably heard about this name. He'd heard testimonies about it. Woo, my Lord. And you're telling me he's come looking for me? I'm telling you right now, this Savior has come looking for the lame man as well. He's come looking for you. Y'all still with me? Let me say this this morning. Just a side note. The church, especially the Western and American church, have placed a lot of our faith and confidence in the amount and power of silver and gold in which we possess. Let me just stop right here one second. I was reading through some stuff this past week. And there they were collecting the offering. It began to make mention of the guy. It was in a Catholic church. That's where this phrase come from. And they were sitting around talking. And as the young men was counting. And they looked to the man, whatever they want to call him, the bishop or whatever he was. And he said, you know, there was a time that the church didn't have any silver or gold. But that ain't our problem today. And the bishop looked back and says, but what we got now can't do what Peter and John had. Do you understand this? <laughs> I want to just share this thought with you this morning because we have put so much confidence, we have put so much power in the silver and gold that we possess. As a matter of fact, that becomes the focus of our faith. We're talking about the church. And the reason I say that, because the first time that the church confronts an obstacle, it always looks into what it's got, got of worth in silver and gold. You got mighty quiet in here. We as families, when a crisis has confronted us, 
the first thing, maybe I'm not making it plain this morning. The first place that we want to look when a crisis has hit us, I need to first of all check to see how much silver and gold that I have. That becomes the object of our faith. We must never let our faith in Jesus and what he's capable of doing be affected by what we see or neither by the lack of what we possess. God is able and his power and ability is not determined by what you see, neither by the amount of gold or silver that you possess. He's God all along right by himself. My, my. I want to share one more thought. Somebody said, I thank God he got this in two parts, sermon. <laughs> I was preaching one Sunday. It goes back years ago with certain things you won't ever forget. You get all wound up, you know. I, I learned my lesson on some things. And that Sunday, probably... It was a rarity thing. I got long-winded. <laughs> and I, I said that Sunday, we had, a, we had visitors with us that day. And a man came in with him and his daughter, a daughter about six, seven years old. And I'm going to tell you, if you want to know the truth about something, you ask a six or seven-year-old or you ask an 80 or 90-year-old. If you don't want to know the truth, don't ask them. And I, I said, hey, if you get ready to go, is everybody still with me? Y'all mind me preaching? Just five, Give me five more minutes. I said, if you get ready to go, just let me know. And that little old girl said, Daddy, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was standing up here, and they were way in the back. And it just, mm. <laughs> that guy that was there, he just, just melted, you know, right down. The power of the name and the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to share something here, a thought concerning the Holy Spirit. And you see the Holy Spirit moving in the life of Peter and John here, which has empowered them with boldness to step into their purpose. And Peter makes, name, makes mention of the name of Jesus. Let me share this with you. If you're going to preach, you need to preach Jesus and him crucified. Don't be preaching about the events that are taking place. Don't be preaching of what happened to you in your life this week. Preach Christ and him crucified. Because all of a sudden now when Peter makes mention of the name of Jesus, it is here that the Holy Ghost moves upon the man. Mm -mm -mm. When the name and the work of Jesus is preached, the Holy Spirit will always become present on the scene with power. This is what he does. Last point. And I titled this Access Denied on this last point. For years. Ever how long this man had been here? Do not miss this point. He had made it to the gate, but he had never passed through the gate. He was on the outside of where worship was going on. They never carried him inside. They left him outside. Mm. This man had some stuff going on in his life that had denied him access into the place of worship. And when you go back to the Old Testament, you're going to find, especially with the priests, they couldn't be priests if they was lame, maimed, or anything like this. When you go look where Jesus cleaned out the temple, when he cleaned it out, he led the lame, the blind, into the temple. It gives the mindset that they were on the outside. Oh my, is anybody with me here? 
what they were saying, you, you got to stay out here with the Gentiles. You can't come into the presence of God. You can't come in where worship is taking place at. And for all these years, all he'd ever been able to do is just sit on the outside. He was denied access to the inside until a man showed up by the name of Peter who had a gospel. And now you see when the man rose up, the first place he go, that he went, he didn't go back out in the street. The place that he desired to be in the whole time was in the presence and you see him now running and shouting inside of the temple. And I want to tell you, what was he doing? He wasn't running around telling everybody that he was healed. He was running around praising the Lord. Oh, my. Is anybody with me? Because I want to tell you, Pastor, what does this have to do with me? Since the day I was born, I have been denied access. Oh, you're not with me you're not with me this morning. I have been denied access. I, I've been dirty. I've been lame. I've been maimed. But I want to tell you this morning, the blood of Jesus Christ who died for me has took my sins, which was a scarlet, and has made them white as snow. When Jesus died upon the cross of Calvary, there was a phrase that was made mention that the veil... The thing that has separated uh, me and you from the very presence of God has been torn down. And what Jesus does at the cross is what Jesus was doing for the blind man. He says, I am giving you access. My, my. Whoo. This same access is to me and you through the name of Jesus. Amen. It's mine and yours. I said, what I got to do? Just reach and grab a hold to it in faith. This is what Jesus has done for us at the cross of Calvary. Amen. I want you to stand your feet this morning.